so we started uh, particle physics last week and uh, we discuss about the particles so quickly i will go through first we started with the concept of annihilation when matter and antimatter join they release in it release energy this is called annihilation or we can also say when particle combine with its anti particle they annihilate or they release energy and as a result when annihilation occur it gives two photons to conserve the momentum as well and what is a pair production it's opposite of annihilation when particle and anti particle is produced by a photon or energy we call that as pair production the fundamental particles some of the particles experience strong force strong nuclear force we call them as quarks and some of the particle experience weak nuclear force we call them as lepton so this is a lepton family you have six leptons which are electron electron neutrino muon muon neutrino tau and tau neutrino quarks the particle which experience strong nuclear force these particles are refers to quarks and these quarks consist of up down strain charm top and bottom this is a charge relative charge of these quarks and the anti particle if it's up anti up will be represented by a bar so these are the quarks you can see and you can see their masses so you will find the top quark is having the highest mass you should learn the order you should know which one is massive and which one is lighter quark what are hadrons actually particles which experience strong nuclear force such as meson and baryon are known as hadron baryon means it's a combination of three quarks meson means it's a combination of quark and anti quark so proton is actually a baryon neutron is actually a baryon why because it consists of three quarks and for ev for every quark the baryon number is plus 1 by 3 for anti quark the baryon number is minus 1 by 3 so because the baryon when we find the baryon number because it consists of three quarks so each quark is having plus 1 by 3 so when we add them we'll get complete one whole number so baryon number for each baryon is plus 1 and anti baryon is minus 1 mesons what are mesons the par combination of quark and anti quark is called meson and baryon number for meson is 0 because if one is quark and other is anti quark so if one is plus 1 by 3 the other one is minus 1 by 3 so as a result baryon number will be 0 so pi on pi positive k on they, these are examples of mesons so basically the particles can be divided into leptons which experience weak nuclear hadrons which experience strong nuclear these hadrons are further divided into baryon and meson baryon means a combination of three quarks meson means it's a combination of quark and anti quark example of baryon such as proton and neutron and examples of quark examples of meson such as pi on and k on and examples of lepton electron muon tau and their neutrinos and their anti particles all are leptons so example a particle accelerator accelerate the proton through a potential of 1.8 giga electron volt this is a voltage 1.8 giga electron volt which and makes them collide with anti proton so basically proton and anti proton collided with each other same energy but in opposite direction the collision create a proton and anti proton pair like here you can see so what happened means there is another proton and anti proton pair is there so first you have uh, a proton and there is anti proton
So one is proton, another one is antiproton. And they are moving towards each other, they collide, and this result in a formation of proton and antiproton pair. So we have to write the equation for this process, as I mentioned. So as proton and antiprotons are there, they're creating this a pair of another proton and antiproton. What is the reason from how these particles are produced? So as you can see, when we apply the potential, so this proton was, was having a kinetic energy and this one is also having its kinetic energy. So basically their kinetic energy converted into the mass and when it convert into mass, the energy change into mass or matter, we call that as when energy produce particle and antiparticle, we call that as a pair production. So there's a pair production. That's why you see proton and antiprotons. Now give one similarity between proton and antiproton. So what is the similarity between particle and antiparticle? They will have the same mass and two differences between proton and antiproton or two differences between particle and antiparticle. So they have opposite charges and they have opposite spins as well. Like example, if one is rotating clockwise, the other one rotating anti-clockwise. Or when you say a baryon number, because proton is a baryon, anti-proton is also a baryon. So baryon, because proton consists of three quarks, where anti-proton consists of three anti-quarks. So if baryon number for proton is plus one, baryon number for antiproton will be minus one. You can use that as a difference as well. Find the total kinetic energy of the proton and antiproton before they collide and give your answer in giga electron volt. So because each was moving with 1.8, so what will be the total? It will be two multiplied by 1.8, which is equal to 3.6 giga electron volt. The rest energy of a proton is 940 mega electron volt. State the red rest energy of the NT, rest energy or rest mass. Like example, if as a particle they move, there is a relativistic effect. What is a relativistic effect? Means the particle have a constant mass, but when they move close to speed of light, like example, uh, 0 0.8 times the speed of light. So what happened? their mass will not be constant, their mass increases. That's why we use the term rest mass. Rest mass means like when the mass is not changing or mass is constant. Because when the particle moves closer to speed of light, their mass is not constant. They gain particles or Higgs bosons. That's why the mass will increase. And as the mass increase, so it will not be actual one what we calculated. So rest mass, and rest energy means if it's an energy release if the particle have that specific rest mass. So if rest energy of a proton is 940 mega electron volt, it means this is an energy released by one proton. So same amount of energy will be released by antiproton, which is also equal to 940. Calculate the total kinetic energy of the particle after the collision. So how we can find the total kinetic energy of the particle after the collision. So you can see here, the kinetic energy, because what we need, we need what will be the kinetic energy or what will be the speed at which these particle will move. So, the original, the total kinetic energy was 3.6. And energy to create the particle, how much energy is needed to create the particle? Because you need 940 mega electron volt to create the particle, one particle. That's so the total energy required to create one proton and one antiproton that is equals to 940 multiplied by two. That's why this is. 940 multiplied by 2. This is a total energy required to create proton and antiproton. 
and this is a total energy available the kinetic energy so when we take a difference the difference of like but one is in giga one is in uh, mega so you can convert this into giga and subtract so you will find 1.72 giga electron volt is it clear because what happened you have particle anti particle as a result when they combine with each other they give another proton and anti proton so these two masses will cancel out balance so basically the kinetic energy is responsible for production of these particle so it's not all of the kinetic energy used to produce the particle some of the kinetic energy used to produce the particle and the remaining kinetic energy is a kinetic energy of the product so what we did we have the initial kinetic energy of the particles minus the energy required to produce the particles so when we take a difference we will know how much kinetic energy will be there for the particles which are produced is it clear this example yes any doubt in this then for some interactions which involve a strange uh, quark we called a strangeness number so the property strangeness is needed some reactions cannot happen even though there are many things conserved but the strangeness number should also be conserved so the strange quark has a strangeness minus 1 and anti strange is minus uh, it's plus 1 and if all the other quarks are leptons they all have strangeness zero so if strangeness of a hadron can be found by adding the strangeness how many particles are there example so strangeness number a property called a strangeness is need to explain why some reaction cannot happen like example for some reactions when we find uh, the charge it is balanced when we find or it is say equal when we find the mass that's also conserved momentum is conserved but still the reaction does not proceed so if the reaction does not proceed to explain the idea why the reaction does not proceed we use the strangeness number to explain so strangeness number it's for every strange quark it is minus 1 and for anti strange it is plus 1 copy this strangeness number For example, uh, beta decay can be negative beta decay. It can be positive beta decay. What's the difference? Negative beta decay means electron is released, and positive beta decay means positron is released. Not proton, positron. Positron is anti particle of electron. So, example, if there's an equation in a beta decay, a neutron decay to produce a proton, electron, and anti electron neutrino according to equation so you can see this equation so if neutron break into proton electron and anti electron neutrino so we can also write this equation in terms of quarks what is neutron neutron is actually up down down and what is proton proton is up up and down in terms of quark composition you should remember these compositions for a neutron it's up down down for proton it is up up and down that's why for a neutron neutron is a neutral particle why it's a neutral uh, baryon because it is up down down so up is plus 2 by 3 down is minus 1 by 3 and minus 1 by 3 so when you solve you all cancel out so that's why you're left with zero so neutron is a neutral particle 
where is proton it is up up and down it's also a baryon because it's a combination of three quarks so up is 1 by 3 uh, up is plus 2 by 3 and uh, that's also plus 2 by 3 and then minus 1 by 3 so when you solve you will get a charge is relative charge is plus 1 that's why this is charge is positive so it is up up and down electron is a lepton so you cannot write in terms of quark an anti electron neutrino is also a lepton so you cannot write in terms of quark so if we cancel out the common like how we cancel out you can see this can cancel with this it's the same up can cancel with up so what we are left with it can be so basically what happened in this reaction there is a down quark which gives an up quark electron and electron neutrino is it clear yes and same way if you check a positive beta decay positive beta decay means a positron is released so a proton decay to produce a positron and electron so proton gives neutron positron and electron neutrino so when we write in terms of quark composition it is up up and down this is up down down and when we simplify this so what happen like up will cancel with up down will cancel with down so it means up quark change into down elect positron and electron neutrino so the equation we can just work out you can see it started with concept of neutron that neutron it happened with neutron but in reality it's not happened with neutron it's a down quark which changes and give a result same thing it in a po positive beta decay or a positron emission a proton is first change to neutron and elect positron and electron neutrino but in reality when we simplify it is in reality when we simplify it is a up quark which gives down quark positron and electron neutrino then when there is a particle interaction and uh, what we have to check in interaction the following are conserved energy momentum charge spin lepton number baryon number and in any interaction involve a strong force like example a strange quark so the strangeness should also be conserved so example we'll do some examples here so we should always check how to check a conservation of a baryon number as we know for baryon because baryon consists of three quarks so each quark having a baryon number 1 by 3 so that's why 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 so total baryon number for each baryon is plus 1 for meson because it's a combination of a quark plus anti quark so that's why it is zero and anti baryon all anti quarks are there so that will be minus 1 and when we check lepton number you can see the lepton number for each lepton particle is plus 1 and for all the anti particles it is minus 1 now we'll discuss some interactions so example the first figure figure shows a beta decay a negative beta decay first we check the charge because what we have to check we have to check the charge should be conserved lepton number should be conserved baryon number should be conserved spin should be conserved and strangeness also should be conserved so neutron give proton electron and anti electron neutrino so when you check the charge neutron is a neutral particle so charge is zero when you check the charge the total charge of a proton it's a positive plus 
here it's a relative charge because actual charge of a proton is 1.6 exponent minus 19 but when you compare in terms of 1.6 exponent minus 19 so the sim they have the simple same ratio for electron and proton that's why it's called plus one electron minus one and anti electron neutrino all electron neutrinos or anti electron neutrino their charge is zero so you can see here this side is zero plus one and minus one so that also makes zero so it shows that the charge is conserved both sides so take for the charge then you check the lepton number lepton number for every lepton it is plus one and for anti lepton it is minus one neutron is a baryon so it's not a lepton that's why it is zero proton is also a baryon it's not a lepton so it is also zero electron is a lepton so that's why it's plus one an anti electron neutrino it's an anti particle so lepton number will be minus one so when you check the lepton number on the right hand side it's zero on the left hand side it is also zero so what it shows it shows that the lepton number is conserved then you check the baryon number baryon number for every baryon it's plus one anti baryon is minus one neutron and proton are baryon so the baryon number is one one and these are leptons for lepton the baryon number is zero so on the left hand side baryon number is one on the right hand side baryon number is one so that is also conserved a spin half a spin in the beginning i explained the spin of each particle neutron having a half spin proton having a half spin electron having a half spin but anti electron neutrino having opposite half spin so these two will cancel out so you can see the spin is also conserved then the strangeness strangeness refers to if there is any strange quark that's called a strangeness number so what is neutron neutron consists of up down down and this is up up and down so there is no strange quark that's why it is zero there is no strange quark zero lepton strangeness number zero and anti electron neutrino strangeness number is zero so it shows that all are conserved so if uh, for a reaction all are conserved it means this reaction or interaction does not violate any conservation law so it can occur is it clear yes same way when you check another reaction so in this reaction use the conservation law to show the so there is a kion positive interacted with anti proton gives kion negative and proton first we check the charge kion charge is plus 1 proton anti proton is minus 1 k negative minus 1 so charge is conserved lepton number kion is a meson so it's not a lepton so for it's zero proton is a baryon so for baryon also lepton number is zero k minus is also a meson so lepton number zero proton num proton is also a baryon so lepton number zero so lepton number conserved when we check baryon number for every for every meson it is zero for baryon it's plus 1 and anti baryon is minus 1 so when you check for kion the baryon number is zero proton anti proton it's because it's a anti particle baryon number minus 1 but for proton baryon number plus 1 so you can see the baryon number on the left hand side and right hand side is not equal so a baryon number is not conserved so this interaction cannot occur or cannot happen is it clear so if if we like we check the charge lepton baryon if baryon number is not conserved we will not move on to the next part we will stop at that one about the spin spin one because in spin should be conserved but the thing is 
normally you don't have to check the spin you you normally check lepton baryon and strangeness number so another question if the rest mass of electron is 9.1 exponent minus 10 uh, minus 31 find the energy in joules and this could be theoretically converted into a photon so how to find energy we have the formula e is equals to mc square e is the energy which is produced m is a mass so mass is equals to 9.11 or 9.019 exponent minus 31 kilogram multiplied by speed of a light square so speed of a light is 3 exponent 8 and then square when you multiply you will get this energy in joules in the next one as we have said that the reaction occur in particle accelerator that proton and proton example give pro, two protons one more proton and anti proton if the rest mass of a proton or anti proton is 1.6 exponent minus 27 calculate the minimum total kinetic energy for the incident particle so how we can find the minimum kinetic energy for in incident particle because what happen if two protons are producing two protons and one proton and anti proton so these two particle produces proton and proton what about these two so these proton and anti proton to produce this proton and anti proton what we need we need energy and that energy from where it will come it will come from kinetic energy so we will use the formula e is equals to mc square so m what are m i will substitute that m will be the mass of proton and the mass of anti proton and multiplied by speed of a light square i will get how much energy is needed for the incident particle is it clear the second one yeah which of these reaction is forbidden by conservation of the charge means because of the charge this reaction will not occur so when you check the first one proton proton gives proton proton then pi positive and pi negative so you can see here this these two can cancel out so charge plus 2 charge plus 2 so this can occur but what about this one so this this cannot cancel out so there is extra positive charge on the right so this reaction is forbidden in terms of conservation of charge is it clear yes because you have to remember the charges here as we discuss the mesons so you can see here the charge of pi positive is plus 1 and kion is also plus 1 k positive and its nt is pi negative and kion negative same way which of these reaction violates the conservation of lepton number so you have to check a lepton this is muon muon uh, anti muon basically gives uh, anti proton plus uh, anti electron neutrino plus anti uh, muon neutrino so for every lepton the lepton number because we just have to check the lepton number not all in the this we have to just check lepton number 
so for every lepton it is plus 1 and for anti lepton it is minus 1 so when we check because it's anti here anti mu particle is there so this is anti particle so lepton number will be minus 1 this is uh, anti particle of electron lepton number minus 1 this is anti particle so minus 1 and this one is lepton so plus 1 so when you check is it conserved so you can see that this is not violating it's conserved because these two will cancel out so you're left with minus 1 and minus 1 both side is equal so it can happen other one you have muon anti muon neutrino plus proton gives muon and neutron so for every lep this is a lepton so lepton anti lepton it's minus 1 this proton is a baryon baryon number is for every baryon lepton number is 0 and muon it's also a lepton so it will be plus 1 and for neutron it's a, a neutron is a baryon so lepton number 0 so this interaction cannot occur because it violates the lepton number and when you check for this one this one is uh, minus 1 minus 1 and this is gamma and you can see here the gamma particle it's not a lepton it is refers to energy like a photon so that's why the lepton number will be zero so that this interaction cannot can also occur so all these show that these interaction conserve the charge and the baryon so when you check the charge proton proton <clears throat> so four proton and a pi pi neutral is there so four proton and so the charge of a proton plus 1 plus 1 Plus one, plus one, and because the pi neutral, so that's why there is no charge. So charge is conserved. When you check the baryon number for every baryon, it's plus one. Anti baryon is minus one, and meson it is zero. So baryon number is also conserved. When you check for the second interaction, when you check the charge, plus one, plus one, this this is conserved, and baryon number is also conserved. is it clear these interactions yeah now sometime you have to identify the the unknown particle so example a muon can decay as follows a muon is there it gives a muon is there it gives a electron and nt uh, it it gives the electron sorry muon neutrino and another particle x so how we can find this particle x so as you can see you have to check the conservation so like what should be the particle x so first we have muon it is decaying into electron muon neutrino and another particle x is released we don't know what is x so first when we check the charge here the charge because uh, muon ele muon electron and uh, tau all they have they are the leptons they have a charge minus 1 so this is charge minus 1 electron charge is also minus 1 electron neutrino muon neutrino and tau neutrino their charge is zero so because the charge is conserved so this element x should this particle x should have zero charge so charge of the x should be zero that's we identify then we check the baryon number electron uh, sorry muon 
is a lepton so baryon number is 0 electron is a lepton so baryon number 0 muon is a lepton baryon number 0 so because the baryon number left and right hand side is 0 so what should be the baryon number of this the baryon number of this particle should also be 0 then you check the lepton number so when you check 